Hi folks, it's me, Jim Kinney. That's me sitting in the chair enjoying a good story. I just wanted to take some time to share with you some tips and tricks that I use with my students in order to help guide them tell very specific stories with very specific outcomes. This involves creating custom templates or frameworks in Adobe Spark video. To create a Spark video, you need to go to Spark dot adobe dot com and you can see I'm on my spark page right now and it's got a selection of content that I've created down here which can be organized using this section right here to create content you just click on the blue circle with a plus sign it then presents you with a choice of working with graphics web content or video it's this third one that we're interested in because we want to produce a Spark video. The first thing it wants to know is the title. It forces the creator to consider what the overarching message or theme is in the story. It should be a neat summary of the content. It also presents an opportunity to throw in what's called a hook, something that's going to grab the attention of your audience. So perhaps we want to sensationalize this title. I don't want to just call it building narrative structures or building narrative frameworks for storytelling. I want to really pump up their curiosity. So I'm going to call it Untold Secrets of Digital Storytelling. And I'll put an exclamation mark on there. The next thing that it does is it presents you with a number of templates or narrative scaffolds that follow some traditional storytelling paradigms from promoting ideas a show and tell, a hero's journey, and more. It's this last one that we're interested in because it allows us to customize the structure of the storytelling. However, we just want to take a look and see what some of these structures look like. If we want to take a look at the hero's journey, you'll notice that each slide is set up with different major prompts and inside each slide there are minor prompts looking for more granular information. The setup slide wants you to tell about the hero and their world before their quest began. Then there's the call to adventure. What happens that causes the hero to undertake their quest? And so on. So all of these templates lead the content creator along, making sure that they're plugging in the appropriate content at the appropriate time. So we're just going to go back I'm going to choose a different story paradigm. We're going to choose the custom format. Now you'll notice that once it prepares this, the only pre-made slides that it has are for the credits and for any end branding in your outro. So you'll notice the credits here. This is a great feature of Spark. Any content that you access from within that Spark platform, particularly in the royalty-free areas, it automatically burns in the attributions for you. But keep in mind, if you're using external sources of content, you need to make sure that you're following the appropriate intellectual property guidelines. The very first slide is blank, so it's up to us to create these prompts. And I do this with my students because it allows me to really direct on a very local level particular responses to very particular questions that are focused on very particular activities. I work with design students and so my conversation is around the process of design but for the sake of this lesson we're going to do a science project. To create the first slide again it's very simple you have a choice of types of content that you want to use iconography, photos, text, video, or a combination of any or all of these elements. You'll also notice that there are a number of themes that are available to you. There are some branded themes and there are some other themes here as well. And I'm going to use this focus theme and you can also indicate a preference for music. I'm going to use this one here, Western Sage, and you can preview that by hitting the little play buttons beside them. There you go. So we can hear that. I prefer to dial the music down a bit so that it's not fighting with the voiceover. So I brought that down. I can preview it again. I think that's better. We've got theme choices. We've also got layout choices for the type of things that you want to put on there. 
So you can use caption, titles, and text. I'm going to start off with this one. And so it allows you to add two things, one being the title. And I'm going to put this in as intro video. And a little extra bit of text here on what exactly that means. So I just give it a little extra text information there explaining what it is exactly I want them to put in this area. Now I'm going to do some voice and that's simple you just click the red microphone button and you start talking and it's very forgiving if you mess up and you start recording notice it counts you in and if that's not what you want you simply release and you start recording again. You can even see the sound bar indicators here as well to let you know that the recording process is live. So, I'm just going to speak to my students here. In this slide, I want you to create a short selfie video on your cell phone showing you introducing the name of the show that you've agreed upon with your group, introduce yourself, and introduce the subject matter for the show segment that you're producing. So, I've created my first custom prompt. The thing to know also is it likes you to stay within 30 seconds. Keeping things brief is really important. If you've got a very long-winded piece of text um, and you require more time, you need to duplicate the slide exactly. Do half of your voiceover on one slide and half the voiceover on the second duplicate. Okay, so we can review that slide by hitting this play button. In this slide, I want you to create a short selfie video on your cell phone showing so there you go, you can see that happening. And I've created my first prompt. And I would continue to do that prompt after prompt after prompt so that when the students watch that, they can then use those prompts to create their own custom story that aligns with your course and project objectives. I'm gonna continue with this process, build out my presentation, then come back and visit it with you and show you sort of slide by slide what I did and why I did that. You can see down here that I've built out the entire resource now and it consists of a lot of prompt slides like you see here with voiceover explanations in each one of them. I usually follow up each of those things with an example. So you can see here with these slides I've created an example video for them to kind of follow and be inspired by. So you can see some of these and I'll drill down into one to give you a, a closer look at it. This is a great opportunity to showcase any digital skills that you or the members of your group might have. So adding production values like music, filter effects, titles, animations, anything like that, it's going to make your production values soar. All right, knock yourself out. show that digs into the kooky, crazy corners of the known world. I'm your host, Jim Kinney, and this week's show, well, it's really in bad taste. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the science of flavor chemistry and how things like color and texture affect our perceptions of food. Stay tuned and get your knives and forks ready. One last thing, don't forget to share your story. Just click there and pick a category. I'm going to use education. You can give it a subtitle for more information. And then you generate a link. You can choose a number of output options, either for Facebook, Twitter, email, or to embed within an iframe and a web page. Or you can simply copy the link here and email it to somebody. 